So here we are on uh, day five. Day five. <coughs> a, lo- a long, slow katina ceremony. <laughs> Big uh, pauses in between. It's like a single katina ceremony, but with long pauses <coughs> between the um, the moments of, uh, of the uh, offerings being made. And um, I, f- I feel as a, a, a very good spirit, and it's very delightful to be in amongst um, uh, the group here for this. Uh, I've never been in a sort of a festival every day uh, <coughs> situation quite like this. Um, <coughs> it's, it's, uh, as has been said, it's been a good opportunity to connect with people. But uh, putting everything together, taking everything apart, and then um, bringing all the elements together for the different uh, different days, uh, it, it takes quite a lot of effort and attention and cooperation. And uh, <coughs> also just the, in the flow of meeting people, and things that need to be done, it's, it's very natural that there's friction along the way, that you've carefully put something down in one place and somebody's carefully picked it up and moved it somewhere else and you don't know where they've put it. So, or that you get assigned to work with uh, <coughs> person X and uh, the um, <coughs> people didn't realize that you and X don't get on very well and that uh, you've got to deal with working with this person. Or you're bumping into somebody uh, at, uh, during the, the ceremonies or uh, at the meal time, and and the, this, just the person you didn't want to spend time with, <laughs> and yeah, you're you're sort of trapped in a conversation. You're feeling like, oh, how can I get away from this person? This is really irritating. And when's this when's this going to be over? Uh, I'm not reading anybody's mind. This is just uh, <laughs> Casey thought. How did he know? <laughs> this is the, again, it's uh, statistics rather than psychic powers. Just how we are as human beings. There are these <coughs> friction points. So, uh, as has been pointed out in, in a number of the, the Dhamma talks, so that uh, <coughs> the, the the Buddha's teaching points us directly at that experience of dukkha. This is association with the disliked is dukkha. <laughs> Separation <coughs> from the liked is dukkha. Not getting what you want is dukkha. So uh, during these these days and uh, <coughs> this time in particular, I feel it's it's very helpful to be remembering that. Also, there's a bit more activity and responsibility everyone has during this time, more things to pick up and uh, more things to be doing. So the possibilities of, of friction or trying to hang on to the things that you like, uh, being annoyed at being uh, together with the things that, that we dislike is is uh, it's far more likely or natural at uh, festival uh, busy, uh, active times like this. So uh, what, uh, the kind of practice I like to use myself, uh, uh, during, particularly during these kind of uh, occasions, is a conscious meditation on, on feeling, and particularly on the feeling of, of dukkha, of dislike. And so when you're in the middle of that conversation, <coughs> you're trapped in a conversation, you really want to get away from it, or you, you're, maybe you're not bored with the person or irritated with the person, you just need to get to the bathroom. But uh, <coughs> to be able to notice that, oh, this is the feeling of dukkha, this is the uh, association with the disliked, dukkha. Apiyehi <laughs> sampayogo uh, dukkha, recited regularly in the morning chanting. This is association with the disliked, it's dukkha. And in that moment, there's the, that, uh, the appropriate reflection for the first noble truth, to understand or to apprehend, this is dukkha, this is, this is that, I don't want to be with this person, I need to get away feeling, that's what this is. Uh, or, that, oh, oh, doesn't the world monk know that I can't, uh, so-and-so and I don't get together, feeling. <laughs> Doesn't he know? Uh, so you're withdrawing the mind from absorption into the judgment or the opinion or the, the way of holding things and recognizing, oh, this is an event and the mind is creating dukkha, creating friction and difficulty out of it. It's this feeling. And that the mind that knows this is a feeling is not identified or attached to that feeling. The mind that knows this is painful is not in pain. <laughs> the mind that knows this is the uh, this is agitated or this this is busy. That the mind that knows busyness isn't busy. That the mind that knows irritation isn't irritated. And that's what uh, in the the the, uh, the Buddha's guidance was relating to the first noble truth, parinyayanti. It is to be known, to be apprehended, to be understood. It's just that quality of mindfulness that knows, oh, this is, the, uh, this is exactly what I was trying to avoid, feeling. <laughs> That's what this is. And uh, I use this, this practice very, with great regularity. 
Um, and also, uh, not just dealing with pain, things that are painful or difficult or, or frustrating, but also with um, things that are delightful or really enjoyable. Like, this is the perfect day, yes, to be able to, to, le- to loosen the grip on that and say, oh, this is, this, is the, this is the perfect day, yes, feeling. That's what this is. And there's a, 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 an expansiveness, a spaciousness that we find in our heart, so that things that are delightful or pleasant or getting what we want, the mind doesn't get bedazzled or drunk or carried away with that. It's just, yeah, this is a sweet moment. It's like this. <laughs> or this is exactly what I was trying to avoid. <clears throat> this, is the, um, this is the exactly what I was trying to avoid feeling. That's what this is. It's like this. <laughs> and uh, right there, there's peacefulness. So that, that uh, is, say, one of the escape, uh, escape routes from the cycle of, of birth and death, of dependent origination is to apprehend that quality of dukkha and it just it just <laughs> just is a big word i realize <laughs> contains a, a lot but if uh, we just uh, apply that quality of mindfulness and watch those those judgments of i like i dislike this is something i wish i didn't have to deal with or when's this going to be over then if there's the mindfulness uh, and that's uh, applied uh, moment by moment then we find that uh, even in the midst of a lot of activity and, and um, pleasant, painful, neutral experiences, we find a great peace, a great ease, a, a spaciousness. We're not waiting for things to be over, to be, to be peaceful, or we're not trying to, to say, uh, find value in the, 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 the things that we like that we can keep, but rather the, 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 the value or the, the preciousness, the, the treasure of the moment is the, the Dhamma treasure itself, the Dhamma jewel of... The, uh, the reality of, of Dhamma itself, here and now. It's always present. Even when there's you know, <laughs> being stuck in a conversation with someone that you'd rather get away from so you can get to the bathroom. This is the, I've got to get to the bathroom in seconds feeling. That's what this is. <laughs> and it's a, it's a remarkable thing. It's a remarkable quality. But just that simple meditation on feeling and recognizing it as it is and training the heart to, to relax, to let go then peace is always here. The, the Dhamma is a, a kaliko, it's timeless, it's ever-present. It can't go anywhere else. <laughs> it's, it's, it has to be always here. So the heart opens to that. And then peace and freedom and uh, ease is always right here. Here one. <laughs>